I want to start this video with an appreciation for Misty Rosas. She's played so many amazing characters in The Mandalorian, Kawil, Frog Lady, and in season 3 according to her Instagram account, she had four distinct roles. She played the Snivian bartender, one of the Argnauts who helped Mando and Bo-Katan, Gorian Shard's Argnaut pirate, and another frog. She's awesome, and I loved her in season 3. But today, my dear Maglorians, we're entering rumor territory. A new reporter suggested the Mandalorian season 3 finale was going to be very different. Enjoy today's video. So The Mandalorian Season 3 is over, but ever since Chapter 24 The Return, the fandom response has been mixed. Many fans loved what Season 3 gave us, while others are more lukewarm, and some fans are underwhelmed, especially considering some of the creative choices. Now, as we know, keeping our expectations low is probably the best approach, so you're never disappointed. Don't expect your theories and expectations to come true, but there were rumours and reports from reliable sources who did get things right for earlier episodes, but when it came to their reports for the finale, very few things came through. Some reports they were adamant were going to happen. Sometimes rumours just don't pan out, even from the best, most reliable sources. But that brings me on to today's video. A few rumours have emerged from those claiming to be close to production, explaining what went wrong and revealing some of the plans for the last episode, some of which were filmed but were later scrapped. There is some evidence to suggest these rumours might be legit. Now before we start, when it comes to rumours like this, take them with a huge grain of salt. As I say, some of it might be true, some of it might not. Regardless, it's fun to see what could have been. But no more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into this. Now, one of the biggest parts of the finale was Ragnar taking the Creed. In the first episode of Season 3, Chapter 17, he was about to take it, before the dinosaur turtle rose up and interrupted the proceedings. Well, if you notice, in the final episode, when he finally does take the Creed, unlike the first episode of the season, the son of Pazfisla, Ragnar, was not made to swear to never remove his helmet, and a few of you picked up on this as well. Well, in the final scene of the third season at the cabin on Navarro, this was going to come full circle. There was going to be a scene with Pedro Pascal helmetless looking at Grogu eating the frog, but it turns out, due to busy scheduling because Pedro Pascal was busy on The Last of Us, they used Brendan Wayne with his helmet on, but this is not all. In fact, the finale was also meant to include a scene with Carson Teva talking to Mon Mothma, pleading for her to take the Imperial Remnant threats more seriously. Now, Mon Mothma is confirmed to appear in the Ahsoka show, so that's going to continue there, but this was meant to be a tease for that. It was scrapped because this is what Hera's going to do with Mon Mothma in the Ahsoka show. They didn't want to be repetitive, and so as I say, that confrontation takes place between Hera Sinjula and Mon Mothma. It's also rumoured that Ming-Na Wen, Fennec Shand herself, filmed for the final episode. They shot this scene during the night, it was going to be a post credit scene and a tease for the Book of Boba Fett season 2, which Making Star Wars said is in production, or something with Boba Fett definitely is. They had reports of seeing Slave 1, but Boba Fett himself was not going to appear. Now, on the subject of Kevin McKidd, in 2021, I reported that Kevin McKidd's Fen Rao was going to be in Mando Season 3. Then Making Star Wars revealed the same thing, but it turns out Kevin filmed for the Ahsoka show, which was in production at the same time as Mando Season 3, so it was very easy to get the wires crossed. The rumour also mentioned some more dialogue between various Mandalorians, and there were a few adjustments and tweaks for the last two episodes, which, by the way, were meant to be one long one. There was also an earlier version of season 3 where Din Djarin became the marshal, but they decided they didn't want to tie him down with Grief Cargren Navarro, and so they made Din Djarin make an agreement with Carson Teva. And I should mention the scene with Fennec Shand was going to take place on bar 2, and more evidence that Fennec Shand was meant to be in season 3 is that Ming Na Wen and not Tamar Morrison flew to London for Star Wars Celebration, so more Book of Boba Fett content is coming. Now, The Mandalorian Season 3 did have a lot of great things. I do think it was a fun season, but if I had one criticism, I would say it played things very safe. A lot of decisions do feel like an afterthought, and a lot of the time it feels as though it didn't hit the potential it should have done. But I honestly believe that now Din Djarin, and I guess I'm going to call him Din Grogu, are back to their old ways. Season 4 has the potential to be an absolute killer season, with all the magic and nuance the first two had, and it's going to be informed by the events of the Ahsoka show, which in and of itself is setting up the next stage of The Mandalorian universe. 
I asked you guys, this amazing community, what you thought of the season 3 finale. It was majority positive, and as of the recording of this video, 42% say it was good, 35% say amazing and loved it, 15% say just okay, 7% say underwhelming, and 2% say they didn't like it. Personally, I'm in the 42% who say it was good. Now, I must say, although season 3 was not my favourite Mandalorian season, it did have some of my favourite moments of the entire show. Episodes like The Convert and The Minds of Mandalorian are some of the best Mandalorian content we've had. From a certain point of view, I myself am a convert, because before season 3, I was not the biggest fan of Bo-Katan Kryze. I didn't mind her in the Clone Wars, as you know, I'm a big fan of Star Wars Rebels, but I wasn't the biggest fan of Bo in that. I liked her a bit more in Bryce Dallas Howard's season 2 episode, The Heiress, but Bo-Katan in season 3 changed my mind. I really started to understand her character arc, and I know she's not the best person in the world, she has a history of doing terrible things, her story is one of overcoming, not letting her past failures define her, and being there for a people when it matters. And now that Mount Lore is re-established, and there's not the divisive Darksaber weapon, this is a fresh opportunity for new stories based around the home world. And I'm grateful that right at the end they divorced her story from that of Din and Grogu, they're gonna be doing other things now, back to bounty hunting, discovering more threats of the Imperial Remnant, but having the possibility of calling upon Bo when need be, when they need someone there for them. The Mandalorians have Din's back, and you might be wondering, which Din? Do you mean Din Djarin or Din Grogu? I mean both of them, they're both Mandalorians. Grogu is now a Mandalorian apprentice, no longer a foundling. This is the way. And after the armor renamed Grogu and anointed him, she also teased in a big way what's to come. She tells Mando, you must leave Mandalore and take your apprentice on his journeys, just as your teacher did for you. So more amazing adventures across the galaxy are in store for our favorite father and son duo. Of course, season four is going to be much bigger in scope. We have Grand Admiral Thrawn, who's gonna be the big bad, but also some other remnant factions that were teased in the Shadow Council. So I've got no doubt, but before Mando, in about two years' time, and before the Ahsoka show this coming August, on May the 4th we have Star Wars Visions Season 2, and this show is blowing critics away. Some outlets got screeners. Season 2 is going to be very different to the first. There are many more animation styles by some very talented studios from across the world. Based on what the director have seen, they're calling this Disney Plus's hidden gem. They say, quote, Season 2 is absolutely incredible and stunningly beautiful from front to back. While they were originally hesitant it wasn't just going to be anime, they were blown away and ultimately feel as though this was the right call by Lucasfilm. They even say, this is some of their favourite Star Wars ever. A very strong statement, I'm just gonna wait and see. I did very much enjoy many of the shorts from volume 1, and I can't wait to see what's in store for the second. Joseph R. Bell from Murphy's Multiverse praised season 2 for its ability to showcase diversity of animation in the galaxy far, far away. Some others noted this immerses you into a very different kind of Star Wars, painting a more intricate and purely magical version of this universe. Laughing Place were also blown away by the quality and variety of submissions, so some very positive stuff, and I will be checking this out, and also giving you my honest thoughts and review when the season is out. This drops on May the 4th. But with that said, my dear friends, that brings us to the end of today's Star Wars news update. If you enjoyed this one, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and if you want more videos that you can't find here on YouTube while also helping to support what I do, then click the link down there in the description. But until the next one, guys, may the force be with you always. I'm Star Wars Meg, have a good one.